Today I'll show you three methods for capping off a cylinder with a dome. They should all work in any modern parametric CAD program, but I'm going to be using Onshape for this demo. So the first method gives you a lot of control over the pointiness of the shape and the height of the cap, while the second method provides you lots of options for how to end it at the start and the end, as well as gives you options for smooth curvature continuity. And the last method lets you create a perfect hemisphere, which might be useful for manufacturing purposes. So as with all good things, we're going to start with a sketch. In this case, I'm going to use a make connector and rotate it around to define the plane that we're going to have the sketch on. In other CAD programs, you can just use planes or some other system, but it'll depend on your package. I'm also going to rotate it around a bit, so it's kind of wonky and difficult to work with. So this will really kind of demonstrate how this method works for any cylinder anywhere. I'm going to start with a circle here. I'm not going to constrain the diameter. I'm also not going to set the um, extrude distance to be any sane number. It's just going to be kind of left there. And this is what we'll work off of. So for the first um, for the first method, I'm going to duplicate this, and we're going to be using a revolve with a conic shape. So the way we can quickly define a plane on the circle over here, that's kind of slicing it like that, is we can start a sketch here, and now we can draw a line from the center point over to any of the sides here, except that simply click the line and the point and add a plane. So this will cut the cylinder in half like that, and it works even if your cylinder is like upside down and twisted on all axes or whatever. So now I'll start a sketch on this plane, and I'll start by adding some lines. So let's add a line like this. It looks like vertical is aligned, but it might not be in all cases. So you might need to use you, you might need to use some parallel and perpendicular constraints to get it working. I'm going to select these two and add pierce. That's basically like a 3D coincident constraint. And now I'll add the conic. So I'm going to click these two points, go out here and place the virtual sharp roughly in the right position. For the row value, I'm going to set it to something like 0.7 in order to demonstrate how we can get that sort of special pointier shape to the dome. And now I just need to select these two points to make them horizontal, or if it's not behaving properly, draw a line here and make it parallel to this one. Do the same thing here, vertical if that doesn't behave nicely, then add a line here and uh, make it parallel here. And now finally, I'm just going to add a dimension here. So diagonal like that, let's just call it 30. Perfect. So now if I take this and revolve it around, for the revolve axis, I'm going to use that line that we made there, then I get this nice cap. What this gives us is it gives us a lot of control over the height and also this kind of shape here. So if you set the row value to be low, it's going to be practically a cone. If you set it really high, it's going to be practically like a square or something. But um, one thing that it doesn't give us is if we go to curvature visualization, you can see that there's a sharp jump in the curvature. It doesn't give us that smooth continuity that you see in Apple devices and other things like that. I mean, if you're like making a boiler or something, it doesn't matter if it looks beautiful, but hey, it might be important. So the second method gives us a lot more control in that sense. What we're going to do is we're going to make a plane that's offset. So you can click a plane, offset it from there, that face. Or alternatively, if you're using Onshape, you can start a sketch and use an implicit make connector here. I know that in Inventor you can make a sketch and drag it off of the surface, so that's kind of the equivalent of this with the make connector. And so let's let's just add a point over here, right on the center like that, snaps coincident, and accept. You might need to um, project that circle if you're using another CAD package. Now for the loft, let's click this circle here, and this point here. We get this cone shape, which is most likely not what you want. So for the start profile condition, if we choose to make it normal to profile, then it's going to make sure that it starts going in the normal direction. And in fact, if we use match tangent, it's also going to give us the exact same result because this um, profile that's coming in is tangent like that. If it were coming in at an angle like that, it would match that tangent and make it smoother like that. But for the end profile, we still have this kind of like onion sort of shape. So for that, if we were to choose normal to profile, it fails because our sketch there was normal in this direction. And it's this single tiny point here. So we get some very funky zero dimensional geometry going on here. So normal won't do. If we had a circle that we were lofting to, it would work. But in this case, what we want to use is tangent to profile. So what that means is that if you go sideways, right like that, then this loft is tangent to that profile that we defined there. In order to make it look a little bit less kind of lumpy, I guess is the right word, we can increase this and we have some control over the shape like we did with the conic. But the problem is that if you want to make it really pointy and like really rectangular, if you push this value too far up, then it starts stringing into this weird kind of mushroom shape. So let's just, let's just keep it at three. And if we go to curvature visualization, we can see since we selected match curvature, we can see that there's a very nice smooth continuation G2 curvature continuity. 
Now, for the last method, this one might be the most realistic since it's the most easy to manufacture. We're just going to add a hemisphere up here. So we'll use the measure value feature script. In other CAD packages, you might make a sketch here and a dimension and name it and then it's a parameter or whatever. But what we're going to do is we're going to just measure the diameter of this here and it sets it to D, that's fine. You can rename it if you want. We're going to use either the move face command, which moves this face up like that, or we can also use the extrude command, which really does the same thing in this case, although it might give you different results if you have a more complex shape. And we're going to set this distance to D over two. When we add the fillet here, so click it and then use your fillet command. If we choose a circular option and choose D over two, and that gives us a perfect hemisphere. So this is easier to manufacture if you're like using some sort of forming machine or I don't know, I, I don't know, I'm not a machinist, but I bet a hemisphere is easier to manufacture than whatever funky shape or loft was over there. You can also choose curvature continuity if you want G2 continuity. That's kind of a quick one step way to do it, whereas with the loft it was a little more tricky where we had the end things. And make sure that the curvature is kind of like very even across here and symmetrical. You can really do whatever you want here. You can also use a conic even if you'd like, but that doesn't give you the advantage that we had with the first method of adjusting how tall it is. Alright, so thanks for watching. I'll have a link to this document if you want to explore all three of these methods and more closely investigate their curvatures or whatever. Make sure to share this tutorial if you found it helpful, and if you'd like to see more tutorials, consider subscribing and leaving a comment with your ideas. Thanks again for watching, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments too.